Muscle mass is what supports your metabolism. So when we see these women eating 1200 calories and they've lost a lot of their muscle, their metabolism is lower. Then they go back to eating fun foods again. Then you are gaining more weight more right. rapidly. What's up, fam? It is Coach Jay. I am here with... Coach Heidi. Today, we're going to talk about menopause. Yeah. Yeah, it's my favorite subject. Well, it's your favorite subject. <laughs> um, I love it when we talk about female hormones... <laughs> totally. ...on the podcast. This I know. is, you know, I'm glad that we are revisiting this. Um, but, but the thing is, what happened was the other day, I was on a call with um, a potential client, and they were kind of going through menopause, as a lot of women here are. Yeah. or maybe before menopause and menopause yeah yeah that's that. the term <laughs> yeah and it was just like this sort of they gave me this feeling of just like well you know i guess i'm gonna gain five ten pounds every year and you know i'm just gonna get weaker yeah. and like this is just how it is mm -hmm. and the and i not knowing as much about it as you do i was like you know i'm pretty sure that like a lot of the females here have either been through that or are going through that yeah. and have the opposite experience. Yeah. And so what I thought we'd talk about today is basically like, is life over <laughs> when you <laughs> when you have menopause? And then how can you how can you um, sort of prevent the the sort of deterioration yeah. that that can happen, you know, in terms of weight gain and losing strength, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, and how we do that at the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So excellent. My favorite subject, yes. but the thing is, I don't know a ton about it. So you're going to inform yeah. me as well as the rest of the audience. You're going to learn so much. Yeah. So uh, let's just start with, um, tell me kind of what, <laughs> what menopause <laughs> is, Yeah. right? What's happening Sure. and, um, and how that sort of impacts your body. Yep. Yeah. So the, the short speech of this is in your usually mid 40s to mid 50s, your menstrual cycle starts to fluctuate, starts to become irregular as your hormones and your reproductive system ramps down. You're yep. no longer ovulating. Uh, your hormone levels of estrogen, progesterone, FSH, LH, all of these like female sex hormones start going really wild yep. and then they kind of drop off a cliff. And so what happens is during perimenopause, which is this period of fluctuation, which can last a long time like it can last eight to ten years i think wow yeah it's crazy you get all these crazy symptoms as a thank you for all your childbearing years you get hot flashes you get night sweats you get like cognitive issues tons of fatigue all of this stuff related to your body being under stress because your hormones are doing weird stuff right then you hit menopause and estrogen and some of the other hormones that are generally protective for your body, leave the party. So mm. estrogen helping you keep muscle on your body and protecting some of your neurological stuff and uh, other things, it's it's generally helpful. And then it just kind of leaves and you get this other version of it that isn't quite so great. So yeah. as you get into menopause, your body is kind of uh, really angry with you and it's doing all these things it's never done before. And then, it, you know, you get to a point where the things that you were doing before to feel healthy and feel good aren't working. Right. So you end up feeling like one, you're getting more frail Two, your, your brain isn't working three, you have these wild mood swings and it's just like, I don't know what's happening. And in fact, one of the funniest, like fun facts about menopause is like the, there's a theory that the Salem witch hunt and all of that was around menopausal women because they kind of lost their shit. Mm. Uh-huh. Huh. So, so there's all these changes that happen in the years leading up to you losing your period. The true menopause is one year post having a bleed or having a cycle. Mm. And so there's this whole period between perimenopause and then postmenopause where the actions that you'll take will be really similar. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's okay. a whole transition. So it's basically this whole process of yep. when you stop ovulating. Yes. And then at, when it's over, like everything's back to normal? No. Or? <laughs> no. Okay. All of the hormones that you did have when you had a menstrual cycle in your reproductive years, they tend to be uh, like they just aren't produced by your ovaries anymore. Yep. Or the levels of them are so different that your body just isn't operating the same. Right. Okay. Yep. So, so you get all these symptoms like, you know, mood changes yeah. and hot flashes, et cetera. Yeah. But, and some of that stuff it levels we, off. Yeah. Some of that stuff levels mm -hmm. off, but specifically what we kind of deal with or 
talk through is some of the physical symptoms. Yeah. So like feeling like less strong. Yeah, totally. Uh, gaining weight. Yes. Um, what other things like aches and pains, aches and pains, a lot yeah. of fatigue, yeah. um, mental fog, stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've found that for the women that are going through this here, that they tend to be able to handle that stuff a little bit better. Yeah. Right. Is it, is there a way to prevent that stuff completely or there you can't necessarily prevent it completely, but you can mitigate them. Yeah. There are a lot of different ways you can mitigate, um, for instance, hot flashes. Yep. Protein intake, surprisingly, is one of those well, things. Well, don't get to solution yet. I, just just <laughs> yeah. an idea, like yeah. you can make some nutritional changes yeah. to, to mitigate that. When you talk about muscle loss, it's similar. Like we're going to obviously talk about what you do with your training and nutrition to yeah. prevent that. And so there is a certain amount of body change that you will have to accept, but I think it's a lot less dramatic than what people think. Like mm. your fat's going to redistribute itself because you don't need... Uh, you know, fat around your your midsec or fat around like your hips to yeah. to bear children. It's yeah. going to move to your midsection. There's a fair amount of that that is going to happen, and you can't necessarily prevent it, but you can certainly mitigate it to where it's not feeling out of control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In in some of our podcasts about pregnancy, mm -hmm. it's like really similar. It's like if you go into a pregnancy and a birth having done training yeah. and eating well, etc., then you can, it, it makes the process a little totally. bit more manageable. Yes. It doesn't prevent the worst of things, but yeah. it's just like prevents, it makes the process more manageable totally. and a little bit smoother. So s similar in this case is just like, if you go in, well, not even just going in, but if you're going through it. Yeah. And even you, after. Yeah. And if you do certain things, it, you know, it makes the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. So for a female going through menopause, she when she's coming into the gym, which is this happens often, yeah, right. Um, what are some of the things? What are some of the problems that they're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest ones I hear: uh, my clothes don't fit. Yeah, like everything has changed. I'm gaining weight faster than I'd like to. I feel like I'm doing all the same things. I'm eating all the same things, but weight's coming on. Yeah. Uh, secondly, you're going to get people and women that don't feel strong anymore. Yep. Like I used to be able to do X, Y, Z. Now it's really hard for me. I can't do a push up anymore. Yep. I, I want to be able to play with my kids or my grandkids and I feel weak. Yeah. So those are kind of the big two. And then it's interesting because a lot of times it's not until you dig into those that they'll mention the other things like, Oh, my shoulders hurt all the time. My yeah. knees hurt. My back yeah. hurts. And yeah. these are things that I think women are used to understating all of the levels of problems because they don't expect that we can help them with it all. Yeah. But um, there, there are a host of other kind of secondary things that come up as well. Yeah. So we've had a lot of success working yeah. with uh, ladies going through this. Totally. Yeah. So give me kind of some examples without using any names mm -hmm. of like, what are some of the women that have come in yeah. complaining about these things? Yeah. What are some of the changes that you've seen or that we've seen kind of working yeah. through with them. I kind of think about it in two buckets, like our perimenopausal women and then our postmenopausal women. Yep. So in our perimenopausal, it's, you know, they're feeling better energy. They're feeling like their life tasks are easier. They've stopped the weight gain. They feel like they're strong again. Their body composition is changing for the yep. better. They're yep. losing body fat, uh, you know, in the range of it does tend to happen a little slower than when you were 20, but you can lose a half pound a week, for instance. So yeah. a few months go by, we've lost 10 pounds, we feel better, our clothes are fitting better. Yep. All of my workouts are stronger. Hey, my mental fog has improved, my sleep has improved, mm. my hot flashes aren't as bad. It's it's a lot of symptom mitigation, and then the real <laughs> results, of course, of changing muscle mass and body fat. Yeah, so we've been kind of yeah. going on this uh, journey recently of like, tracking the numbers yeah. of uh, some of the results that we're yep. looking for. Do you have any numbers that you can yeah. share? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So this is uh, specific to uh, kind of an example of perimenopause. The one I'm thinking about came in with kind of pain as a primary thing yep. uh, and has some other medical complications, but she's lost about eight pounds. Mm. Um, and she was working out before. She yeah. was actually lifting weights before, but she's lost about eight pounds. She's lost body fat. We've resolved her pain. Yep. Um, so just, you know, by the numbers, there's that. Yeah. When I look at the postmenopausal bucket, I think there's a lot of opportunity here as well. And more specifically, this one client I'm thinking about has lost 20 pounds. Mm. She's lost, oh, I don't know, 8% body fat. 
let's see, 6% body fat. Yeah. Um, she, significant. It's yeah. significant. Yeah. Right. She, more importantly, she's also lost visceral fat, which is one of the things that we worry about in menopause. Like you're at higher risk for cancer, so, diabetes. So, yeah. so actually, let me break that down because this is important for yep. men as well as like the visceral fat is the fat that uh, collects around your organs. Yeah. Right. So if you see men with like a big beer belly or women, right. Yeah. Big, like sort of beer and belly. And you'll see that in menopause as well. Yeah. Then yeah. what that means is that there's more fat collecting around your organs, which increases your risk of like everything. Oh, yeah. Heart disease <laughs> and things like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so having less fat around your organs. Yes. Means that you are more likely to live longer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. And so yeah. we, our scan that we do measures visceral yeah. fat. And so it's like, if your visceral fat goes from, I, I, what is it like? It's rated from one to 20, right? One to 20 and it yeah. stops reading at 20. So we have seen people that are above yeah, and then it takes a while. Like some people have to lose 30 pounds before they drop under 20, which, right. you know, is huge for yeah. their quality of life. But for instance, this one went from 17 to 14. Right. I'd love to see her somewhere around 11 yeah. in the long term. Yeah. You so, know. so in, in a real sense, there yeah. are less fat around, there's less fat around yeah. that person's organs, which means that they are more, less likely to have issues with heart disease, et cetera, et yep. cetera. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And so, I mean, this, this is something that women going through menopause, it's more likely you're going to collect visceral fat. Yeah, yeah, it is. And in addition, again, one of those things with estrogen leaving the table, like you're more prone to cardiac issues, you're more prone to cancers, you're more prone to a lot of the things that your hormones had to this point kind of protected you from. Yeah, yeah. So, so some things have to change. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're just looking at a few yeah. of the stats. We've had people lose 5% body fat. Yeah. We've had them lose, would you say 20 pounds in that case? Yeah. 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 And, but not only that, but you know, they got stronger. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So dead, deadlifts going from, you Oh know, my goodness. It, you know, someone coming in with back pain, adding 20, 30 pounds to their deadlift after having trained for a long time or someone having never deadlifted. So another one, another great example came in and she had never deadlifted a barbell. Yeah. And I saw her, what did she deadlift? 265? Two sixty-five. Yeah. Two sixty-five. Oh my goodness. 52 years old. Oh my goodness. Mom She's, of four. Yeah. She's, I didn't know she had four kids. Yeah. Anyways. I think it's four. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. And, yeah. Um, so at 52 years old, never mm-hmm. touched a barbell within one year, she went from deadlifting 35 pounds to yeah. deadlifting 265 yeah. pounds. Yeah. And it's funny. I was just, I was going back, uh, looking through the pictures. They look completely different than oh. they did a year ago. Never lifted weights before never. in a whole life. And I think lost around 20, 25 yeah. pounds, something like that. She, it's so fun because I remember that conversation with her. And yeah. she's a friend of a friend who had come to us. And, you know, my friend says, I'll be okay. Yeah. And so there's always this little fear. And I'm like, look, we're going to take great care of you. You don't have to feel like all this pressure to perform. Yeah. And every time I see her in the gym, I'm like, holy moly, you look more fit than the last time I saw yeah, you. And I've yeah. been saying this for the last year. And she came into one of my workouts on a Saturday with one of her kids and she just crushed it. Yeah. Like teenage son was there. It was so cool to watch her side by side with him. And she just absolutely slayed the workout. And then to see her lifting, like, where yeah. did this come from? Like yeah. chills and goosebumps. Yeah. yeah. And th- this is the thing. It's like, I, I think we, we've been, we've been, kind of talking about some of these stories, I think for a lot of women, Mm -hmm. what they have known for, you know, 40, 50, 60 years of their life is not actually what works to get them results for the next 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever it is. Right. And so a lot of women in, in the past will have done, you know, Hey, I run a bunch. I do a Mm. bunch of, you know, whatever cycling classes you know i do yeah i do some you know i i lift weights and then it's like great i have these pink (laughs) two and a half pound dumbbells that's not lifting weights (laughs) right it's not and uh and you know the thing is that is the reference and so the females that come in here and all they've ever done is lifted pink weights and hop on a spinning bike yeah it's not gonna it's not actually gonna help them to do the things that they need to do to get Absolutely. through this, this period. And yep. so, um, and so often the story is, Oh, I've never lifted a yeah. barbell before. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm intimidated by this. Mm-hmm. And there's, you know, a little bit of friction, probably somewhere between three to eight weeks of like scared, being scared of everything. Totally. Right. 
But as you start to see some of the results and you continue to show up, yeah, it like it starts to compound. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, part of uh, what I wanted us to do today is kind of share some of those stories. Yeah. But specifically, what are some of the things that this person and some of the other ladies are doing differently? Mm -hmm. And and how would you what would you recommend yeah. for, you know, women going through this to kind of resolve some of these issues, yep. resolve some of the weight gain, the pain, the, you know, lack of strength, et cetera. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is going to be fun. This is a big topic. So, <laughs> so it's, okay. Yeah. Let's, so we've, we've got sort of three things, yeah. right? So you got fitness, you've got nutrition and you've got accountability. Recovery. Or recovery. And yeah. accountability. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about the fitness part. Yep. What, what what should they be doing for fitness? Yeah. So I think this is where we get kind of the biggest myths, right? Because traditionally to lose weight, it's eat less, move more. And people will take that. Oh, I'm going to go do an hour of cardio. Yep. I'm going to step it up and I'm going to pelt on six days a week. Yep. I'm going to go do this class, this cardio pump kick class. Yeah. That is not the strategy. Yeah. So in the fitness world, and this is true of the other stuff, what we're trying to do is get adaptation with the least amount of stress possible. So one, you have to lift heavy. Okay. So lift heavy. Yep. Yeah. Specifically, like to summarize, you have to lift heavy. Mm. Um, what does that mean? So lift heavy. that means that pink dumbbells aren't going to cut it. I'm thinking big compound movements, bench, press, squat, deadlift. I'm thinking, you know, for some women that come in without experience, like maybe they do only work up to 50 or 100 pounds, but it's going to be uncomfortably heavy. I want it to be where three to five reps feels like, <gasps> like right. your, your nervous system actually gets in on it and you feel a little scared because that's where you're going to get the adaptation. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you used a bunch of complicated yeah. words, <laughs> adaptation <laughs> and, you know, wh your whatever. Body, your body's going to adjust to this new thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. look, here's what you do. Yeah. You're going to lift heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to do things like deadlift, yes. squats, yes. maybe bench press, yes. some, something with a barbell. Yeah. Right? Now, it doesn't have to be a barbell. It could be a heavy dumbbell. Yeah, but it's going to be heavy. Yes. It's not going to be pink. No. No. If you <laughs> right? can do 12 to 20 reps at that weight, it's too late. Like, yeah. It's not going to give you the right stimulus. So you're going to so you're gonna lift heavy and you're going to do a low number of repetitions, yeah. something like three to five mm -hmm. repetitions. And what you mean by central nervous system, like it should feel hard. Yeah. Like it's going to feel hard yeah. for that five reps. Yeah. If it feels easy and five reps, it's not heavy mm -hmm. enough. Right? There will be a time where you question like, is this a good idea? Yeah. And yeah. that's, that's how heavy it should feel. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of ways that we approach yeah. this. The barbell is the most convenient and easy sure. way that we do it, but you know, it could be like a heavy, you know, dumbbell carry or something be, like that. And, yeah. the, and to be clear, women that come in with injuries, it could be a heavy sled push. Yeah. It could be something that doesn't involve, you know, yeah. something yeah. that's totally scary. So the so the, the other part of this is like you want to lift heavy, but you want to figure out how to do it safely. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we <laughs> we don't this this lady who deadlifted 265. We didn't say just like, oh, that's no. not enough weight. Put some more weight on there. No. Right. It was like. <laughs> You know, months and months of like learning the proper technique, learning bracing, yes. and along the way, she's slowly lifting more and more weight yeah. based on what she feels comfortable with mm -hmm. and what her coach sees For sure. that she can handle. For sure. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's a huge part of it. Yep. If you're listening to this and you're like, great, I'm gonna go to the gym and just start lifting heavy weights. Please don't. That, I mean, hey, that might work for you, right? Maybe. <laughs> it might work for you. Yeah. But if you are doing it without any supervision, without any program, yeah. it's likely you're opening up yourself for risk. Yeah. Right? This is part of why we coach people on just, how to do just this. Just gut check yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. Push, push the intensity, but don't do anything reckless. Okay. So you're going to yeah. lift heavy. How often do you do that? Yeah. Probably two to three days a week is kind of minimum effective dose. I don't really need you lifting four to five days a week because recovery is really important. Uh, so you'll be lifting heavy at that peak stimulus probably so, two to three days a week. Okay. So is it two or three? I mean, three is ideal. Okay, great. So three days a week, yeah. you're going to lift heavy. You're going to yeah. do deadlift each one of those days? No, or? you'll mix it up. So you'll probably have one day that's a hinge or a squat, another day that's a you know, press overhead, something like that. So you so, can mix it up. So you might be doing deadlift one day, yep. you're doing a squat one day, a and then maybe a press day. another day. Mm -hmm. So you're doing some sort of big movement yes. that's going to use your whole body yes. each of those three yep. days. And if you're training here, you're also going to do some sort of like 
high intensity cardio yeah. those those three days not super long but that's yeah. that's what you're going to do yeah so that's the kind of training do you do you suggest people do anything else outside of that yeah so you kind of fill in with other things right so it, intervals are a great example of something that is low stress for your body yeah but high reward so so okay so sally sue comes in here yeah never lifted weights before yeah right i'm going through menopause i'm mm -hmm. feeling weak i'm feeling you know like i'm gaining weight yeah. weights moving around i have aches and pains we're gonna have sally sue lift three days a week yep is she going to and what are we going to tell her specifically to do the rest of the week nothing yeah. or no no, no, no. So you're going to, if you have hobbies, you patch in that, right? Like, hey, I really like to go swimming on Sunday. That's fantastic. What I don't want you to do is to go stand on a treadmill and run for an hour every day. What if I like running? We can build that into your program, but I don't want that to be every single day. Okay, unless... so, okay so Sally Sue does nothing. Yeah, Sally what are you Sue gonna does tell nothing. Her to do? The other days you're going to walk, you're going to get out and get some steps, get some movement. Yep. You're probably going to do, if you're in here, you're probably going to come in and do some lighter body weight type stuff and some gymnastic workouts mm -hmm. yeah. because we'll add days of the week. But oh, if she's... Oh my if, God. All right, coach, coach, I need a specific recommendation for Sally Sue. So she's going to walk 30 days a week or 30, 30, 30 days, days a, week, a week, 30 minutes a day. Yeah. So, so walking 30 minutes a day is a perfect example. Perfect. Okay. Yep. So she's going to lift three days a week. And then she's going to do some high intensity yep. cardio during those lifting, yep. like or after the lifting. Yep. And then she's going to walk 30 minutes yep. a day. Okay, cool. Yep. So, and like you said, depending on the person, you sure. can mix in other stuff. If you yeah. like swimming, ride, bike riding, maybe even like running. Yeah. Right. But, you know, it's not going to be super high intensity, whatever those things are. Right. It, right? It'll, it, you just make some small tweaks and you can yeah. fit it in. So you want Sally Sue moving every day? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't want you sitting and feeling crunchy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So this is, I mean, if someone's listening to this, you know, maybe they uh, are just looking for recommendations on what to do. Sure. This is what you would have them do. Yep. Okay, perfect. So anything else on the training side? I, I think the only other thing I would mention is I hear a lot of fear from women that they're going to get bulky hmm. when they, they're like, oh, I would weight train, but I don't want to look like I have big muscles. Mm -hmm. It's almost impossible. To build that much muscle and your goal of training is to preserve the muscle mass you have and if you can edge that up that's great but yeah. it is damn near impossible like unless you are taking steroids you're probably not going to look like a bodybuilder it's really interesting like it's only i only hear this from women that are at least like i would say 40 and above yeah they're worried about getting bulky yeah there's this perception that you touch a barbell and all of a sudden boom <laughs> And it's you just, have to try really hard. You have to try really <laughs> hard. And the and the thing is, like bulky is actually more to do with how much fat you're carrying. Totally. Like if you can, if you look at someone who's bulky, like if it's I showed you a size. picture yeah. of someone who's bulky, it's like they actually have a decent amount of fat that they're carrying. And if they just cut that fat, they would not look bulky. They For would sure. look fit. Yeah. Right. And so yeah, if 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 I could magically make you bulky, then you know, we'd be billionaires. Yeah, like it's actually, absolutely. it's actually really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I, I think there's, there's fear on, uh, you know, these women that just come from a culture of uh, the nineties ideal of what yeah. you should be doing. And we won't go into that. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. um, so that's the training side. Yes. Th training, lifting weights three days a week is yeah. not going to make you bulky. Make sure the weights you're lifting are heavy, sufficiently mm -hmm. heavy, mm -hmm. three to five reps, a little bit of, uh, you know, high intensity yeah. cardio after that. Yep. And then uh, the rest of the days you're doing sort of low intensity. Yeah. Movement. Like yeah. just recovery type active, just be active. Yeah. So like 30 minute walking. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So what, how should, what would you recommend for Sally Sue? What would you recommend that she eats in mm -hmm. order to get some of the same results as the sure. folks that we have here? Yep. The biggest thing we're trying to solve for is not stressing your body by under eating, which is what I hear over and over and over. Women think they should eat 1,200 calories a day so that they can lose weight. How many calories should Sally Sue eat? So we're going to start by talking about protein first. So calories we'll get to in a second, but protein, if you are not taking in enough protein, so 0.8 to 1 grams per pound of body weight, mm. you run the risk and are likely losing muscle mass. Yep. Muscle mass is what supports your metabolism. So when we see these women eating 1,200 calories and they've lost a lot of their muscle, their metabolism is lower. 
then they go back to eating fun foods again, then you you know are gaining more weight right. more rapidly. So right. that's really why we're trying to prevent this. So 0.8 to 1 grams protein per day, uh, per, body, per pound of body weight so per day. So let's say Sally Sue weighs 160 pounds. Yeah, you're looking at like 130 to 160 grams of protein. Okay, mm -hmm. so... And how much protein would you expect somebody like Sally Sue to be eating before she comes in here? <laughs> We've seen like 50 grams yeah. at the high end. Yeah. Uh, you know, if someone's doing really good on protein, they're like, yeah, really prioritize it. It's probably only 80 grams. Yeah. It's yeah. really quite low. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the first thing you're going to do is figure out how we can get her eating more protein. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Second thing, you need carbs for recovery. Mm -hmm. So without getting a specific amount, I would want you to have some serving of carbs at the very least around your workouts, but then scatter them through the day. So, uh, you know, could be starchy vegetables, could be, um, you know, rice or whatever it needs to be. But I want your intake of those things to not be again, like, oh, I'm low carb because we need those to recover our muscles. We need those for a lot of reasons. So that would be the next thing I'd look at. So funny. Like, okay, tell me how much carbs I need to eat. Yeah. Uh, so at least a, a cupped handful of pasta, so, rice, or sweet potato. So we got 130 to 160 grams yeah. of protein. How Probably much about grams? the same in carbs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then how much fat? Uh, fat, it kind of depends person to person, but I'd be looking at at least 60 to 80 grams. Okay. So add that all together. You're looking at about 2,000. 1,800 to 2,000 yeah. calories. Yeah. 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 Okay. So 1,800 to 2,000 calories. Now, the interesting thing about this is when we get ladies that are coming in, mm -hmm. especially ladies that are going through menopause yeah. and they go back to doing whatever they were doing, they're like, okay, I've gained some weight yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting this. Mm -hmm. So I gained this weight. I need to lose this weight. So I'm going to go and do my shake diet or my you yeah. know, weight watchers or my keto or whatever it is they were mm -hmm. doing. Right. And they're like, I'm going, I need to eat only, you know, 1200 to 1500 calories. Right. So that, that's what most ladies yeah. will well, say. That's, most, what, my that's fitness what we've, will tell you that's what we've seen. Yeah. Right. We've seen is totally. people like, hey, I'm going to cut my calories time after time. Why is that a problem? Uh, oh man. So muscle mass, as we talked about is the primary engine of your metabolism. So if you lose that, it's really, really hard to get back after so, menopause. Okay. So what you're saying is by eating less calories, yeah. you're going to lose muscle mass. Yep. And yeah. then in the long term, your metabolism is lower, not a great strategy. Yeah. Yep. Secondly, it's a stressor on your body. So if you're in that perimenopausal phase, you'll have worse symptoms. So <laughs> I'm definitely leading you with all these questions, yeah. but like, okay, so you're going to lose muscle mass. So yeah. you, let's say, you know, you're Sally, so you weigh 160 pounds, mm -hmm. right? you cut your calories to 1200. Yeah. Now you will lose some weight. You yeah. may lose weight. <laughs> yeah. Depends. Right. Yeah. But you know, let's say that you are able to lose weight. You maybe get to 155. Sure. Right. What you're saying is that Sally Sue is actually losing the little bit of muscle mass that she has. Yeah. Which means that when she goes off of that diet, like you said earlier, it's going to be really like, she's going to put on that weight really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why is that? It's, Base metabolic rate, and this is something our scanner measures as well. It's, what is base metabolic rate? So it's the amount of calories you burn without doing anything. Right. You okay. don't even get out of bed. Yep. Your body is trying to, you know, just maintain its normal functions. Yeah. The amount of muscle you have increases that. Yeah. Right. So if you have more muscle, say your base metabolic rate is 1,400. Okay. So Sally Sue mm -hmm. is like, normally she burns 1,400 calories a day. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. Well, just doing her normal day to day no, life, not no even exercise, a, not even walking. Oh, like right. Doing just nothing. If she laid in bed, yeah, that's what she would do. OK, cool. And then, you know, potentially she walks around, whatever. And, you know, she's yeah. burning an extra couple yeah. hundred calories. So she's burning somewhere between fourteen hundred and seventeen sure. hundred calories. Mm -hmm. So if she cuts her calories, so she eats twelve hundred. Yeah. So this is just, you know, spoiler alert. If you want to strictly lose weight, you have to you eat, have to be eat in a less than deficit, you burn. Yeah. Right. So if you cut, if she cuts her calories to 1200, she will lose weight, but she's going to lose muscle. Yes. That means her base metabolic rate drops from 1400 to let's say 1300. Yeah. So then when she goes back to eating 16, 1700 calories, she gains weight faster. Yep. Because there's less muscle to burn that's the exactly calories. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, and that's one of the things that it's really hard to explain yeah. to people. 
most of the time when they come in here with Sally Sue, we're going to tell her, I want you to eat 2000 calories. Yeah. And she's going to go, that is insane Yeah. because I only ate 1200 before and that's how I lost weight. Mm -hmm. And we say the goal here is not necessarily for you to lose weight. Yeah. And that's, that's really hard. It's like yeah. you being 160 is amazing. Yeah. Let's stay at 160. Yeah. And let's change what that 160 is made yeah. of. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, and that's really one of the keys to, you know, for, for menopausal women is like, you're going to lose muscle Yeah. by just eating the way you used to eat. For sure. Unless you do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's where the training comes in. Yeah. So we're essentially saying fuel the training. Yes. By eating this many calories. Yes. This much protein. Yes. This much carbohydrates, et cetera. And then what is the result? What is the outcome that Sally mm -hmm. Sue can expect by doing this? Yeah. So you'll keep the muscle on yep. your body. You will feel better generally in your training. Will you gain muscle? You will hopefully gain muscle. Yeah. Uh, most people, if she she's not doing anything, she's never touched a barbell, she's going to gain muscle. Yeah, yeah. But yep. is she going to get bulky? She's not going to get bulky. <laughs> so, so there is one small thing, like in the short term, in the first four weeks, you may feel like, oh my God, I'm getting bigger. My pants are tighter. Yep. All of this. There is an adjustment period. It takes about six or eight weeks before your body starts like, okay, I'm, I can come off of this. Yeah. And we've seen this. Wendy has mentioned it a number of times. You can, you, we see a lot of times yeah. in the first eight weeks that ladies will actually gain weight. Yep. But if you look at the scan, which body you have fat there, has gone down. is that your body fat goes down. Yeah. So that means you're losing fat, yeah. but you're gaining muscle, mm -hmm. which is the holy grail of training. Totally. <laughs> right? If you can you lose fat and gain muscle, that. like that is amazing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, okay. Let's keep going. Yep. <laughs> So, so that's the, the general expectation. You'll also expect to, you know, if we look at 20 years from now, you keep muscle on your body, you can do the things you love. Yeah. If you're losing muscle, you're going to struggle to go on those hikes, to go on those backpacking trips. And that's often what I hear. Oh, I'd like to go ski again. Oh, I'd like to do this thing. Yeah. And if you don't support that, good luck. Okay. So we're yeah. going to, we're going to recommend that you're eating 2000 calories presuming you're doing the training, the three yeah. days a week of training, you're going to eat, she's going to eat around 2000 calories, 130 to 160 grams of protein around the same carbs, yeah. you know, fat. And what we're looking for when we're measuring is, are you gaining muscle and losing fat? Mm -hmm. Right. If it's the opposite, then we have a problem. Yeah. But it's, you know, the goal is like, we want to gain and preserve the muscle as yeah. you're going through menopause. Totally. Yeah. You also mentioned recovery. What, yeah. it, what what kind of things do you recommend for Sally mm -hmm. Sue and recovery? Well, nutrition's a part of your recovery, yeah. right? When you under eat and you don't recover from your training, your muscles can't grow mm. and that's a problem. Uh, secondly, mobility, especially around the aches and pains, right? Oh, I have this low back thing. Oh, I have this shoulder thing. So usually a routine of smashing, stretching, et cetera, before and after workouts. Yeah. And then the biggest part by far is sleep. Yeah. So if you are not sleeping eight hours a night or at least attempting seven, seven's probably too little for a perimenopausal woman. But if you are not sleeping enough, you will not get the best results. You can both weight loss and fat loss and muscle gain. Yeah. 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 So this is one of the this is one of the things that I think yeah. people struggle with the most is like so hard. The training is actually easy. Once yeah. you come in here, we just tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. The nutrition is a little harder because it's the other 23 hours of your day. Yep. But once people figure it out, it's like, OK, we're, we're there. The sleep is like, yeah, you know, I don't yeah. want to, you know, whatever. My life is too busy for me to get sleep. But ultimately, it's the thing that makes the biggest difference. Yeah. Right. Once you have the other two things dialed in, now you have these good habits. If you dial up the sleep, then everything else everything gets, gets better. Yeah. And to be fair, there in perimenopause, especially the hot flashes make it really hard to sleep. And so this is kind of a hot topic for a lot of people. Yeah. Attempting to sleep plus putting in sleep hygiene practices, you know, no blue light, no doom scrolling on your phone, like have a wind down routine. These things can be really helpful. Maybe even a mattress pad cooling thing if you're waking up in night sweats. Yeah. But what is sleep hygiene? So it's basically taking out the things that cleaning up your routine, right? So taking out the things that are going to prevent you from sleeping. Right. So just, just like making, making yeah. it dark room. 
Yeah, so just like light. doing a bunch yeah. of stuff that make it easier for you to sleep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Use, a, use a lot of industry terms. I don't I know, know if you noticed that. <laughs> Only when you point it out. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, oh, sleep hygiene and fix your, fix your metabolism oh, yeah. and, you know, I whatever. Know. It's, it's like, what yeah. happens. <laughs> oh, I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, and, and yeah, it's a, that's a funny thing. We, uh, we say a lot of things in here that we expect people to understand <laughs> and people are too afraid to say, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's important to define those things. For sure. So, um, so we, we talked about sleep and then, you know, what we like to kind of focus on is accountability. Yeah. Right. Because I think one of the things that struggle, that, people struggle with, especially when you're going through menopause is your feelings are all over the place. Mm -hmm. So you're not always going to feel like doing some of these things and the accountability piece that we, you know, where you have a coach that's helping you can kind of help get you through some of those feelings. It's just like the, the, the freak out that you have yeah. when you look at a scan and you're like, wow, I gained three pounds. I started this at 160 and now I'm 163. What's wrong with you guys? Yeah. And it's like, well, actually, look at, you know, look yeah. at the thing. You've lost fat and you're healthier because of this, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, you know, if we keep on the same path, then you will end up here. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that's that's the part where if you're doing this by yourself, it's just tougher. Yeah. It's just tougher. <laughs> For sure. And I there there are two pieces to that. One is your coach is there to tell you don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah. Right. If you're having a rough day, your coach is there. Hey, here's what we're going to do. Here's your game plan. Like, let's unspin for a second. Yeah. I know that you have job. I know that you have kid responsibilities. I know you have X, Y, Z. You run the family. It's all of this. And I hear this, especially with menopausal women. Yeah. They have a hard time taking time for themselves. Your coach is there to make it dead simple for you so that one, it's the most efficient possible. Yeah. And two, uh, I'm melting down. Okay. Okay. We're going to go for a walk today. We're going to squat tomorrow. It's fine. Yeah. You know, you're not going to lose all your gains because you missed one part of your program. Like, please go take care of yourself for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So this actually sounds pretty simple. Yeah. I mean, not necessarily easy, yeah. but it's pretty simple. I mean, you're training three times a week. Yeah. You are adding more protein right now. You're adding more protein. You're eating a little more food and you're trying to sleep. Yes. It's pretty simple. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're going to feel great about it all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But what kind of like over the course of, you know, two, three, four, six, 12 months, yeah. what kind of results would you expect to see for Sally Sue? Mm -hmm. One of the most unexpected non quantifiable results is your cognition is better and your energy is better, right? It, like you can think better. You don't, you don't have. <laughs> All right. Don't, like, I, I, tell me, am I going to lose weight? <laughs> yeah. Am I going to lose weight? You will probably lose weight. You will definitely lose fat. Okay. So I lose fat, yep. right? Will I feel, will I feel better? Like with all of the kind of symptoms of yes. menopause, yes. like tell me how you will sleep better. It'll be easier to think. Um, you know, if your nutrition's on point, your hot flashes should minimize, uh, to some degree, just you'll have fewer aches and pains. Yeah. All of the things that you're coming in with will, they might not go away completely, but you'll feel a lot better. Yeah. And your mood will stabilize. Yeah. Yeah. And will I get stronger? Yes, of course. You're yeah. going to get so strong. Will I get bulky? No. <laughs> no, you will. I have not seen a single instance of a menopausal woman successfully getting bulky without... No. We should go the other way. Let's see if we can make someone bulky. <sighs> do yeah. you have eight hours a day to train? <laughs> Let's do that. You ready yeah. to eat 4,000 calories a day? Yeah, it would be like a strong woman How about some steroids? Here yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, and then, uh, will I be able to fit into, you know, my favorite dress or bathing suit? Mm -hmm. I, it depends if you have unrealistic goals of getting back into something from your twenties, that might be hard with the way things have redistributed, but yeah. your frame, it, like if it's a recent pair of jeans, almost certainly yes. And your frame will feel strong, right? Mm. The biggest thing is that I hear in simple terms, it's like, oh, it feels like I took the fat blanket off. Mm. You know, that's mm. regardless of how much you weigh, when your body feels strong and not jiggly, you're going to feel more confident in yeah. that. So even if it's not, oh, I fit into my wedding dress from my mid 20s, it, I'm not the weight. I, I've always been 135. Now I'm 145. Yeah. You're going to feel better when you have that that anchor of muscle. Yeah. The, the other thing that we've seen is like it's 
you know, at 50, 60 years old, people are getting in the best shape of Literally. their life. Yeah. Right. Like <laughs> yeah. You're, you're able to do things like climb a rope yeah. or, you know, do a, do a push up. Yeah. Or, you know, for some of the ladies, like do your first pull up. It's like, yeah, it's pretty amazing because you have all you're kind of offsetting this sort of hormonal thing that's happening mm -hmm. with a new set of like capabilities. I mean, yeah. You're starting to build muscle. You're starting yeah. to build core strength. You're starting to do things you've never done before. And that means that like your body is able to do stuff that it's never done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is which is pretty incredible. Yeah. Right. And it kind of gives you a whole new like life. For sure. And when menopause really hits is the period of decline. This is where women give up. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm just going to end up looking like my grandma. I'm going to end up with my osteoporosis. I'm going to be hunched over. I'm going to be frail, this and this and this. These are the fears yeah. that hopefully are motivating you when you see that, hey, oh, I can climb a rope now. Yeah. Oh, I can squat a hundred pounds. I can carry big things in the garden that I couldn't carry before. I can, you know, I hear these things every single day, just as quality of life yeah. things. Uh, so to pair that with a time that's usually seen as a decline is so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, this is kind of what we've seen. The yeah. average age at our gym is somewhere in mid forties. Yeah. And so we have, we have a lot of mm -hmm. men and women that go through this. And it's part of what keeps this interesting for us is like you get somebody who's never done anything. You're completely changing how they view their lives. They view their yeah. body and they view sort of health and fitness. Yeah. And as they get into their 50s, 60s, 70s, we have some 70 year olds here. Yep. They're in better shape than anyone that they know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's incredible. So menopause does not have to be the end of your life. Menopause is not the end of your life mm -hmm. unless you let it be. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Any other things to add here, coach? Oh, no. I just a little ray of hope. I, I think it's important for menopausal women to feel seen and feel like they have a place in the community and know that, you know, this is possible for you. It seems really scary. Uh, but just know that if you have someone in your corner to break it down and simplify and take it one day at a time, you can accomplish really, really great things. Amazing. That yeah. is a great place to end it. Thanks for watching or listening. We will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, we've got plenty of others. Go check out this one over here.